There we go. Now we're getting some folks to come in. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, while you're preparing for today's lesson, you will want to have out a periodic table and you will want to have out um, either some notebook paper or have the PDF of today's worksheet open or have printed it off already. So anybody have any questions about where to find that? It says completing the reaction one is what you're looking for, completing the reaction one. Is there anybody out there? I see no faces. I hear no voices. I feel like I'm talking to nobody. Hi, Mr. McKinney. I feel like I can be heard now. Thank you. All right, guys. So if you could please um, get that ready to go. I, none of you are on screen except for Logan. Thank you, Logan, for that. So I have no idea if everybody's ready to go. So if you could uh, get on screen and let's go through this together, please. Completing the reaction one. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you, everybody, for getting on. Appreciate it, appreciate it. So completing the reaction one, you can either do this on notebook paper or you can do it on the sheet or you can um, print it off, or annotate or print off, whatever is most comfortable. Okay, so I'm going to start presenting and go through these with you. We're going to go kind of slow to start out, and I'm going to give you some things to think about and look at as you work through this. So give me just a moment to get over. Maybe if my mouse wants to cooperate, I don't know where, oh. I see the problem. Okay, I'm working through it. Sorry, guys, I'm having technical challenges right now. No, why can't I see the worksheet? Oh, there it is. Okay. Can someone let me know if they see the worksheet? I haven't heard a ding yet, so. And someone on mic and let me know. Do you see number one, magnesium bromide plus chlorine? Yes or no, anyone, anyone, Bueller? Right. Okay, thank you. All right, so guys, this is called completing the reaction or predicting products. Um, I've made it as simple as I can in terms of we're going to work with words only. So on your notebook paper, on your paper, you need to be writing. You don't necessarily, if you're writing, if it's notebook paper, you don't necessarily have to write this out. You don't have to, if you want to, you can. Um, but I least expect you to write what I'm writing on the notebook paper. Okay, so let me get my pen ready to go here. Okay, so <clears throat> when you have two words, you're going to... Um, oh, let me turn my TV off. So you're going to do magnesium. You're going to put the ion. So magnesium we know is a plus two. Bromide is a minus one. And chlorine, a single word by itself, you're going to put the charge... So we're going to put charge above every single word, whatever charge each word would form. Now I realize chloride forms Cl1 minus, so if it's a single word, we're going to put what the ion would form above it. Questions about what you see at this moment? So you need to write the stuff I'm writing in blue on your if you're doing it on notebook paper. And if you're doing it on a, the worksheet, um, then you need to kind of do it like I'm doing it. If you're just doing it on notebook paper, then I expect to at least see the blue parts. So then the next thing you're going to write is you're going to crisscross reduce. So that means I'm going to get Mg Br2 plus. So anytime we have two words, we're going to crisscross reduce it. If we have one word, we're going to think about Brinkelhoff yes or no. I know there's a charge there, but there's a reason for that in a moment. So you're going to think about chlorine as a Brinkelhoff or yes. So it's Cl. Um, we did talk about Brinkelhoffs, I hope, yes. And it is a Brinkelhoffer, so it's Cl2. Okay, so uh, magnesium bromide uh, plus chlorine. So we're going to figure out the other side of our arrow. Now, we can think through, and I should have gone back one more slide. Let me go back to this slide for just a moment. So we have a single replacement if we have an element and a compound before the arrow. Remember, it doesn't matter if it's element, compound, or compound element. We have a double replacement if we have two compounds before the arrow. We have a synthesis if we have two elements before the arrow. And we have a decomp if there's just one compound before the arrow. And then a combustion is going to be what we call a, oops, this is a mistake. Let me fix that. That shouldn't be an oxygen there. That should be an H. So this should be a hydrocarbon. Understand what the term hydrocarbon means, a hydrogen and a carbon. 
a hydrocarbon plus an oxygen will always make CO2 and water. So there's one that you just have to memorize. A hydrocarbon, a hydrogen carbon unit plus an oxygen will always give us CO2 and H2O. For these other four, there's a system that I'm going to teach you that we're going to work through with you. Okay. So let's go back and look. So we have a compound and an element. doesn't matter what order. If you have a compound and element, you're going to use the activity series chart. Some reactions take place and some don't. And that's actually true for other types of reactions. But for simplicity, we're going to say that we're only going to, we're going to learn how to know when a single replacement reaction goes or doesn't go. Okay, so um, here's what we do. So we, if we have a single replacement reaction like we do here, how do I know? Because I have an element and a compound, an element and a compound, a compound element, doesn't matter what order we write them, as long as there's one of each before my arrow, which we have here, then you have to use the activity series. So you're gonna say who is alone? Chlorine, right? Chlorine's alone, and this is why we're writing the ions. Chlorine is alone, so it's gonna try to trade places with the other negatives. So it's gonna try to trade places with bromine. So in order to do that, chlorine has to be more powerful, I like to say, or more reactive, or higher. So whoever's kicking out has to be more powerful. So chlorine is higher than bromine. So chlorine is gonna go where bromine was, if it's higher. So therefore, on this side, we're going to have Mg with Cl plus Br. Okay. Now, on this side, we have to reevaluate how these go together. So we got. I'm going to write it up here so, you, so it's not in the way. We have a plus one and a minus two, plus two and a minus one. We know from there. So any compound, two elements, we're going to have to crisscross reduce. So we're going to bring the two down and bring the one down. Any element, so there's no partner here. Then we got to think Brinkelhoff yes or no, and it's a yes. So if you have a compound, you're gonna crisscross reduce. If it's an element, you're gonna Brinkelhoff yes or no. And then we need to balance this um, or tell us it's already balanced. If it's computer, computer submission, you'd you would write all one. So in this case, we have one Mg and one Mg, two Brs, two Brs, two Cls, two Cls. It's already balanced, so you need to tell us that. And then if you were putting it into the a Schoology uh, assessment, you'd tell us one, 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 one. Questions for clarity on this? Okay, so let's go through real quick what we did again. It's very important, I think, to help you if you write the charges above the words. You don't have to necessarily put the symbols. I'll kind of model both ways here as we go. And then you're going to crisscross reduce anything that has two, okay, unless we have to do asset rules or covalence, which we practiced yesterday, but crisscross reduce or do the naming rules. I just realized that I, oh, no, I didn't. I'm sorry. Um, and then if it's by itself, it's going to be Brinkelhoff yes or no. Now we're going to write the charge of words by themselves so that we know who they try to kick out. Okay, so that's why I wrote the chlorine charge, even though when I bring it down here, it's Cl2. And then it's going to, because chlorine is a negative and it's by itself, whoever's by itself before the arrow tries to kick out something that's in the relationship, in the com combination here. So chlorine is negative, so it tries to kick out Br negative. Chlorine has to be higher and it was on our chart. And so therefore it does, and then we crisscross reduce and we brinkle off. Remember, you're only using the activity series chart for single replacements. Questions before I go on to number two. All right, let's look at number two. So we have aluminum and it's a single word, but we're gonna think about the charge as Al plus three. And we know this is Fe2 plus because the Roman numeral two tells us oxide, I look up and it's O2 minus. Okay, so we have a single word by itself. So we think even though we have a charge, we're not using the charge, that's just for later, right? When it's a single word, my choice is all by itself or Brinkelhoff. Is aluminum a Brinkelhoff or no? So it's just AL, not AL anything. If it's by itself and it's not a Brinkelhoff, it has to be all by itself, no subscripts. And then these are both two, so they're gonna squish together. So FeO, I would crisscross the twos down, then they reduce away to ones, and then I would leave them out. So we have an element and a compound. And when we do, we're going to use this chart. Okay, so who's alone? Al is alone. It's got to try to kick out iron. So aluminum is right here. It has to be higher than iron right here. So aluminum by itself has to be higher to kick out. If it's not higher, nothing happens. So because aluminum is higher in our activity series, then aluminum... All right, it's going to go with um, aluminum is a plus three, and it's going to go with oxide. 
and then FV is going to be left alone. It kicks it out. So I'm going to crisscross reduce this. This is AL2O3. And then FE by itself, it's going to either be Brinkelhoff yes or no, and it's a no. Remember our Brinkelhoffs, if you have not written this down on your ion sheet periodic table, you may want to do that. These seven are the only ones that will have a subscript when they're by themselves. Anybody else by themselves will not, should not, would not, could not get a subscript. They just are by themselves. Aluminum, not part of that list. That's why it's just AL. Iron, part of my list. Iron, not part of my list, so just by itself. Now, I know oxygen's part of my list, but I don't consider Brinkelhoff when it's with a partner. I only consider Brinkelhoff when it's by itself. Before we balance this, questions about what you see on the screen. Okay, so um, I'm looking at two aluminums, so I'm going to put a two here to get two aluminums. I see three oxygens, so I'm going to put a three to here to get three oxygens. That gives me three oxygens, but it also gives me three irons. So I'm going to put a three here, and I have two aluminums on each side, three irons on each side, and three oxygens on each side. If you were putting this into the computer for a grade, you would give me two, three, one, three. Questions about number two. All right, number three, silver. Now we don't know the charge of silver, so we have to look it up. We see that it's AG plus one. There's no Roman numeral, so I'd have to look on my ion sheet. Nitrate is NO3 minus one. Zinc is ZN plus two, and chloride is Cl1 minus. Now we're not gonna use this chart because we have two compounds. We're gonna see that in a moment. I kind of jumped the gun on that, but let's go through that. So we're gonna crisscross reduce the same charge so that they just squish together. Now this is going to crisscross reduce. I'm going to bring the two down and the one down. I'm not considering Brinkelhoff because nothing is alone. So I can only consider Brinkelhoff if something is alone. Okay, so we have two compounds. We have compound plus a compound. That means it is a double replacement. Okay, now how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to do, here's the term I'm going to use. So listen carefully, then I'll demonstrate. We're going to anchor the negatives and switch the positives. What do I mean by anchor the negatives? I'm going to write them in the same order. And let's see, Cl1 minus. So I know their charges from before, right? Because I gotta, I gotta think about how they go as charges. I'm gonna switch. Zinc's gonna go here, and silver's gonna go here. Okay. And um, we're going to crisscross reduce. So Zn parentheses NO3 parentheses 2 plus same number. So AgCl. So let's see what we did. Notice I had NO3 and Cl, and I'm gonna look back, that's why I'm having you write the ions there, right? NO3 and Cl, we're gonna trade partners, and then we're gonna crisscross reduce. Technically, it wouldn't matter what order these were written in, I just like to be consistent, so my phrasing will be that we're gonna anchor the backs, so putting them, put the backs in the same order, so the negatives in the same order, and switch the fronts. Now I'm going to cross this out because I don't want that to be confusing anybody. We're not using this to balance. We need to use the actual completed piece to balance. So I see two nitrates here. I'm going to put a two over here, which gives me now two silvers. So I'm going to put a two here, which gives me two chlorines and two chlorines, one zinc, one zinc. This is balanced with a two, one, one, two. What clarifying questions do you guys have for number three? Or anybody need help? All right, let's look at number four then. Two words, so we're going to think about the charge. Magnesium is a plus two, chloride is a negative one. Bromine as an ion, it's a single word, but as an ion, I need to think about its ion in case it replaces. Bromine, or it goes somewhere, so bromine is a minus one. These are two words, so I'm going to crisscross reduce. This is one word, so I think about Brinkelhoff, yes or no, and it's a yes. So this is an element. In this case, it's a compound plus an element. So we would use the chart when we have both E's and C's. One of each before the arrow, we use the chart. Who's alone? Bromine. Bromine is right here. Bromine is trying to kick out chlorine. It cannot because chlorine is not um, lower. Bromine has to be higher to kick out. The thing alone tries to kick out something, right? Why do I know chlorine and bromine are switching places? Because I have negatives have to try to place replace negatives. 
So negatives try to replace negatives and positives try to replace positive. But because bromine is lower than chlorine, it does not have the power to kick it out. And you would write over here, no reaction. And then that would be nothing to balance. Questions about number four. All right, <clears throat> next example, zinc, it's an element by itself. So I'm gonna just put the charge in case I need it later. Hydrochloric acid, hydro X come from ide. Chloride is Cl1 minus, so I need one H in front. So this is gonna be Zn. And I think about Brinkelhoff, single word by itself. Brinkelhoff, yes or no, no. Hydrochloric acid, remember every acid has to start with a hydrogen. That's why we think about hydroic and ic to eight, night to us. All right, so we have an element plus a compound. So it's going to be a chart. We're going to use the chart. Zinc is alone. It forms positive twos. It's going to try to kick out hydrogen. So zinc must be higher than hydrogen to kick it out. It is. So that means that zinc is going to go where hydrogen was, and then hydrogen is going to be all by itself. Two elements, so we're going to crisscross reduce. And then Brinkelhoff, yes or no for hydrogen, because it's by itself. So we crisscross reduce when there's two. When it's by itself, we think about Brinkelhoff, yes or no, and hydrogen is a yes. And then I need you to balance it. Take a moment to balance, please. I see one zinc and one zinc, two chlorines. So I'm gonna put a two here, two chlorines. So that gives me two hydrogens and two hydrogens. This would be balanced with a one, two, one, one. Okay, I would prefer to have done this in person y'all, but this is what we are faced with. So let's look at number, questions about number five before we go to number six. I'm going to actually uh, stop sharing for just a moment and come back to look at y'all for a minute. Okay, can I get a one to five, how you're feeling about this five being, I'm getting it, four being, you know, four being kind of, three being not really, two not hardly at all, and one nothing. Can I get a, a finger so I can understand what's going on? Okay, I got... You're doing okay then. Okay, good. Thank you. I just need to feel feel like I was communic I was interacting with y'all. I feel like I'm talking to the walls in here. So hang on. Let me get. Let's go on to the next one. Good job. Keep keep up the hard work and the and let's get through this together. Um, let's see. Let me start presenting again. All right. Okay, so let's look at number six. Two words, it's an ic acid, so it goes from, it's A to ic. So sulfate, sulfate is SO4, two minus, so I have to put an H plus with it. And I know because um, I, to make an acid, I need hydrogen in front, a negative two, you could crisscross reduce this, or you could just know the rules that we learned it, that anything, and all acids start with hydrogen, and they get the same number of hydrogens as they have negatives. That's why there's H2SO4. We know this is a plus one and a minus one. So you can start writing just the charges if you want. Or if it helps you, you can continue to write the symbols to make life a little bit easier maybe for thinking. Oops. I'm going to scratch this out. This is a minus one. Okay, so two words. So we got a crisscross reduce. So NaOH, because they're both ones, so they just squish together. This is a compound plus a compound. So we are not using the activity series chart. We're going to do what we did a moment ago. We're going to anchor the backs. So I'm going to leave a little bit of space and put SO4 here. And I'm going to leave a little bit of space and put OH here. I know this is a minus 2. And I know this is, oops, not that. This is a minus 1. So I put them in the same order. Now I'm going to switch fronts. So Na is going to come here and H is going to go here. We know Na is a plus 1. We know hydrogen is a plus 1. Let me pause there. All I did was bring the front, the... I anchored the backs, so the back part meaning the negative part, right? And when I say back, I mean the back of each of the compounds. I put them in the same order. That's what I mean by anchor, and I trade it fronts. Now we're going to crisscross reduce. 
So there's going to be a two here. The one's going to go down and go away. The two's going to come down. These are both ones, so I can squish them together. And then remember, you don't you want to get rid of this and scratch that out. Okay. Please take a moment to balance that. I'll be we'll, I'll, I'll get we'll go through that in about oh, 30 seconds or so. You try to balance it on your own. Okay, I'm going to go through it. Hopefully you got a chance to try to balance it. The first thing I notice is I have one SO4 group and one SO4 group. I have an OH group and an OH group. So then I'm going to do sodium next. I see two sodiums on the right. So I'm going to put a two in front of a two in front of NaOH, which gives me two NAs, but also two H's. I'm sorry, it gives me two NAs and also two OH's. So I need to get two OH's on the other side. I put a two here, which gives me two OH's, but it also gives me two H's which I had, so now I'm double checking. I have SO4 and SO4, one and one. 2OH, 2OH, 2NA, 2NA, 2H, 2H, it's balanced with a one, two, one, two. Questions about number six. Okay, number seven, we have a single word, so magnesium, we're gonna think about the charge. Single word, chlorine, we're gonna think about the charge in case we need it, just a good habit to be in. So I have a single word by itself, this is just gonna be MG, not a Brinkelhofer, so just MG. Chlorine is a single word by itself, Brinkelhoff yes or no, that would be a yes. So this time, it's our first example like this, we have two elements. The only thing that we're gonna do with two elements is bringing them together. So we're gonna bring the charges over, always put the positive in front, right? We're gonna bring them over to, when they go together, Right, so this is gonna be what we have, an element plus element making a compound. We don't use this chart. In order to use the activity series chart, we have to have one of each. But we do consider their charges when we put them together because they're building a new relationship. And I'll bring the two down and the one down. And then I'm going to balance this, one MG, one MG, two CLs, two CLs, and it's already balanced. If you were putting it in Schoology assessment, you'd put it one, one, one. Questions about number seven. Okay, eight, acetic acid, and it, eight, so it goes to eight, so acetate is C2H3O2 one minus, so the formula for acetic acid, aka vinegar, is C, let me try that again, H, C2H3O2, okay, remember an acid must start with a hydrogen, we put the same number of hydrogens as we have negatives, so this is copper, I don't know the charge, I just know it's gonna be positive. So we're gonna we're gonna think about it in terms of it when we're writing a chemical formula, when a single word by itself, we think about Brinkelhoff yes or no, and that's a no. Who's alone? Now this is a compound plus an element. So we have to use the activity series chart. Who's alone? Copper. Copper is all the way down here somewhere. And it's trying to kick out who? Well, remember that we knew that this was the positive part, so it's gonna to try to kick out hydrogen. And copper is lower than hydrogen, so this would be another no reaction. Copper would have to be above hydrogen to kick it out. Questions about number eight. All right, two words, so I'm thinking about the charges, PB plus two, and I cannot remember tartrate off the top of my head. Let me grab my sheet. Some of these I don't have memorized as much as I do others. Okay, tartrate is C4H4O6. Okay, so C4H4O6, two minus. Okay, tin is SN2 plus. Uh, oops, let me try that again. How about four plus? That's Roman numeral four. And perchlorate is Cl041 minus. Let me pause there. Any questions about where I get any of that? I'm just pulling this off my ion sheet. Okay, so two, two words we crisscross reduce are applied naming rules. In this case, we're crisscross reducing. Because it's a two and a two, it's just going to be C, PbC4H406. Because remember, what would happen is we bring the two and the two down, reduce them to ones, they go away. Here we have a four and a one, so this is going to be S in parentheses, so four, four, okay? And I need the four and the four because this four, the first four, makes it perchlorate, and the second four is because of crisscross reduce. Questions about what I've done there?
This is a compound plus a compound, so I'm not using this chart. I'm going to anchor the backs and switch the fronts. So that means I'm going to put this as C4H4O6. And just above here, I'm going to write negative 1 to help me remind myself. And then ClO4, and just above, I'm going to write negative 1. I don't want the negatives to be part of your balanced equation, so write them up high or be willing to scratch them out or erase them. Trade partners. So SN is going to go here, and we know that's a plus 4. So, the, so SN uh, goes switches places and PB is going to go here and it's a plus two. I'm writing it high enough so that it doesn't get in the way. I'm going to crisscross reduce so I'm going to bring the one down and the four down here. So bring that four down, bring that one down. Bring the one down and bring the two down. Questions about what I've done there? Questions, questions. Okay, so now we're going to balance. Okay, but I want to get rid of this charge is either erase it or write it up really high um, above or cross it out. I see that I have four C4H406s on this side. So I'm going to put a four here, which gives me four PBs and four C4H406s. So I'm going to put a four over here. Okay, now I have eight CLO4s, right? And I have four BP PBs, but I have eight CLO4s. So I'm going to put a two here. I put a two here, sorry about that. So I put a two there for 10. And now I have um, eight C, something's wrong. Let me see what I, I can't see it right now. Give me just a sec, guy. Okay, I gotta make a correction here. I don't know why I brought this. This is a negative two, right? So this would have been a two and a four, right? And then this would have went away. I got a little carried away here. Uh, this would have went away to a one, and this would have become a two. All right, so let's rebalance this. I'm gonna, I'm going to use my little eraser here and cross those off. Um, okay, so let's go through again. What I, my mistake was, is I accidentally brought this over as a minus one when it was a minus two. So this was a plus four with a minus two. I brought the four down. Let me kind of show you that just to reemphasize that, since I. Did that incorrectly. So this would have been SN, oh my goodness. This would have been SN4 plus and C4H4O6 uh, 2 minus. It's always lovely when the phone goes off. Okay. All right. So then I would have done, if you think about all your steps, right, you would have done the 2, uh, C4H4O6 4. And then you would have divided by 2 because you can reduce it by, by 2, and you end up getting SN C4 H4 O6 2. That's how I got that. Now let me clean that up. So that's going to go away, and that's going to become a 2. Now let me pause because I messed that up and see if there's any questions. Please, please get that corrected on your end, and then let's go through balancing this. Okay. So I'm going to do C4H406 again. I'm going to start with that. I see 2, so I'm going to put a 2 here. That gives me 2 TB, so I'm going to put a 2 here, which gives me 2 PBs, but gives me 4 CLO4s, which I have 4 CLO4s, 1 SN, 1 SN. So this is balanced with a 2, 1, 1, 2. Sorry about that mistake, y'all. Hopefully you corrected that. Questions that you have at this moment? Okay, this is our last one we're going to do today. I'm going to dismiss you a little bit early as soon as we get through this one. So we have calcium, which we know when it forms an ion is a plus 2. Nitrogen, which we know when it forms an ion is a negative 3. So we write the charges above, but it's because it's two separate words. I wouldn't crisscross reduce those. The plus sign won't let me. Instead, i got to think about Brinkelhoff yes or no, a no. Brinkelhoff yes or no, a yes. Okay, so I have... The only thing I can do is an element plus an element is form them together. I wouldn't use this chart because I don't have one of each. So then I'm going to put calcium, which we know is a plus 2, with, with nitrogen, which we know is a minus 3. We're going to bring the 3 and the 2 down. Nothing to reduce. So now we just have to balance it. So to balance it, I'm going to put a 3 here. 3 calciums, 3 calciums, 2 nitrogens, 2 nitrogens. Questions about this one? Okay. I feel like that's a lot of intensity for one day, um, so I'm going to go ahead and dismiss you. Um, 
and we will see you guys all on Thursday. Hopefully in person. If not, we'll probably be doing this again if we're virtual on Thursday. So otherwise, if you don't have any questions, you are dismissed. So we don't have to finish this? Nope. You do not, I do not want you to finish it. I want to go through them with you. Please don't yet. You'll do plenty on your own, Patrick. Plenty. Okay. I felt like I was talking to nobody. That was, that was <laughs> so frustrating. Well, I know. Everybody strong was on. Yeah.